Pialino Juan Poyo Juan, Naman Naman Tikitase Nochi in Motlatlanilis, Tlen in Kitlalike, Ipan Note Postlamawisol, Ni Mech Nankilis Nochi Tlen Nech Tlatlanilike, Juan Tikchewase San Kensin and Chang Tekich Tikitase Tlenpanos. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be I'm going to be answering your questions that you've put on my videos on my Nawat videos and I will also be answering your questions in general that you have. Um, there are no other students right now, but I'm going to be going through each of my videos and seeing what the most relevant Nawat questions are and then we're also going to be doing a little bit of um, a little bit of homework. I'm going to try to keep this at 30 minutes uh, comments from the videos and then 30 minutes from the homework. I'm gonna go through each of the homeworks and then hopefully um, I'll be able to get through everything. If I don't, then I'll probably do another homework session, uh, section where I'll point out some of the inconsistencies or some of the things in my Nawab class that I didn't uh, get to talk about when I um, did my course. Originally, there are a lot of exceptions and, and little rules that I put in the homework that I didn't talk about in uh, my videos and I want to clarify them in this section. This um, this session, this session is a little bit spontaneous because there is not not necessarily a plan, but hopefully it will go well. I'm pretty sure it will. Um, I am still I'm able to answer the questions on the spot about now what for the most part. So this should hopefully be informational and helpful to you. All right, so I'm going to start sharing my screen and. Uh, we are going to go start with video, video number one and I'm going to go through some of the questions or comments that you all had that I thought made an impact or that I want to address. All right. Okay. Quali. So here um, we're starting with the first video, the very first session that I did in my Nawat class. I want to say that Seriously, I did not expect the amount of response that I got. I legitimately got like 700 people interested in the class. And then this video has about 4,000 views currently. And I'm like super like impressed, super happy at the, at the success that this class has had. Now, not all of the 4,000 people who watched the video stayed consistently watching the videos, but I don't necessarily care because those 4,000 people know about the video, have probably shared it with their friends. And so to me, that is the most important thing to me the most important thing in this class is to share the information as widely as possible a lot of people have told me in the past hey you should join a class and you should teach it in an institution i'm open to that however I'm, i work full time and the issue too is this i think that there's so much bureaucracy so much red tape and so many like rules in institutions that gets in the way of the actual learning and i personally would rather just let the information be free and free flowing um freely available all the time that i personally don't think that i should that all those extra rules of this and that and all the, no i don't want to deal with that so <laughs> Because of that, I am letting my class be free and open and available all the time. Share it with as many people as you want. Straight up, do what you want with this, okay? Quali. So um, I'm going to start addressing one of the questions that somebody said. Here you see um, RRPG said, great video. Your explanations and history of the language are not entirely true. Thanks, though. Okay, I want to address this. For I'm a second. Uh, this is my third language, so I don't know every single detail about every single thing about Nahuatl. I've been passionate and I've been learning this for about seven years now. So I know a lot, but I don't know everything, and I'm not always accurate. So you see, my response to him was, "Well, what do you want to clarify?" Because if you think that I have all the answers, I don't. I would like to tell you that you should always question everything somebody tells you. You should always go look uh, stuff up on your own independently because I'm a human, I make errors and I don't know everything. Um, but if you go find something that's contradictory and you have good sources, show me your sources, show me that it makes sense as long as it's logical and you have a good argument. If it makes sense, I might agree with you. So I don't, Per, um, I don't say that I'm always right and that the way that I have, that I know things is the correct way. I make mistakes just like everybody else. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. 
So um, currently my NAWA classes, I changed them to only Fridays at 7 p.m. because I got too busy with work, I became full-time. So I'm not able no longer to do Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Additionally, less people were coming Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I just decided to just have my classes on Fridays at 7 p.m., 7 p.m. Pacific, standard time. I live in Los Angeles and so that's 7 p.m. my time. Okay, a lot of people as you can see commented on this class. So many, so many people were like excited. I was excited like I said at the response. Um, someone, uh, Heidi Alvarado asks, do you still recommend that we learned classical Nahuatl first? Great videos by the way. Yes, I think that you can learn classical Nahuatl, but it's not absolutely necessary. I started with classical Nahuatl. Classical Nahuatl did me so right because it taught me the grammatical structure of modern Nahuatl really well. And it also really explains where a lot of the words come from. See, the variety of Nahuatl that we speak, which is Huasteca modern Nahuatl, it has evolved in 500 years since classical Nahuatl. Classical Nahuatl is like the 1500s, 1600s. And and um, Nahuatl has evolved just like every language evolves. And so um, there's a lot of differences, but there are a lot of words in modern Huasteca Nahuatl that are actually like borrowed or come from classical Nahuatl and in classical Nahuatl, they make more sense. So for example, the word for authority, which is tequiwa, it literally means the person who has the job or person who has work or something like that, tequiwa. Now that construction of adding the wa to a, a noun, that construction no longer exists in modern Huasteca Nahuatl. But if you learn classical Nahuatl, you learn that that's how they used to express the idea of to have. So in classical Nahuatl, um, if you wanted to say, I have kids, you would say, um, ni piwa. So you say, um, let me give you an example. Oh, why isn't this working? Okay, come on, let me. Um, okay. So for example, in classical Nahuatl, um, if you, if you wanna say, I have kids, you could say, um, ni pilwa, ni pilwa, I have kids. Um, and currently, and, and that's the classical way to say, right? Classical. But currently uh, in Huasteca Nahuatl, we would say Nikpilla, Nikpilla Konewan uh, or no Konewan. Nikpilla no Konewan. Nikpilla no Konewan. So as you can see, um, this wa used to be um, the classical way to say to own something or to possess something possession. And so therefore, um, this has changed. And so um, learning, um, and the example that I gave you is the word tequiwa, tequiwa. It means authority or police, authority, police, etc. It, de it depends on what variety of Nahuatl you learn. But as you can see, there's certain characteristics of modern Nahuatl, modern Huasteca Nahuatl, that um, come from classical Nahuatl or related or explained by classical Nahuatl. And so to me, it's, it's, um, it's helpful to learn, but it's not absolutely necessary. Obviously, you can still learn it and know the meanings of words. But if you want to delve like deep, then I suggest that you learn classical Nahuatl. I did it for about mm, a year. And it really helped me. That's why I feel like I have such a basic or a very like natural feeling of feel for the grammar and where what I know where things come from. It's because I learned classical Nahuatl, but you don't necessarily have to learn it. Uh, Let's see other questions. Um, and donde esta esta escuela en Los Angeles? Um, the school or the school that I belong to is not really a school. It's it's in La Plaza de Culturas y Artes and it's called Tlatol Tapasoli. It, it means language nest in Nahuatl. And um, we have, or we used to have when the COVID um, pandemic wasn't a thing, we used to have classes on Sundays at 1 p.m.? 12, Sundays at 12. And so once this is all over, I'm pretty sure we'll resume. And so if you live in Los Angeles, then you could uh, potentially meet me and come and see. And maybe I'll teach you something and maybe you'll like it, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but if you want like that human interaction, that'll be once COVID um, ends. Uh, as of right now, obviously I'm doing my classes on the internet as you can see. And so obviously <laughs> you can enjoy them as much as 
you want to, um, and you could rewatch them as much as you want to, but um, we don't currently have them because of COVID. Uh, let's see, any other questions? I'm gonna try to see the ones related to Nahuatl. I mean, a, a lot of people gave me, um, thank me, and honestly, I'm thankful that, I, um, that I'm allowing you or helping you all with this, because when I first started learning Nahuatl, I had a hard time finding the right resources, and even though I did eventually find native speakers, it took me, it was not easy. So, uh, and, I, I really only got better at speaking when I met native speakers. So let's see the newest comments. Um, which variant of Nahuatl has the most uh, Nahuatl speakers? Um, the Huasteca region, the region that we're learning, it has the most amount of speakers. It, I don't exactly, I can't tell you the exact number of Nahuatl speakers, but um, it's the variety that we're learning has the most. Um, the second largest one is Guerrero, and uh, I can understand Guerrero varieties, but um, even the Huasteca region itself has different types of Huastecas. So there's like Eastern Huasteca, Central Huasteca, um, and Western Huasteca, and they're very similar with each other, but the, you know, depending on how far away you are from that area or from that um, variety, They're, they are different, and I do have some trouble understanding some of them, but that's only because it's, it's my third language, so I don't, I'm not, like, super amazing, but as of right now, I can generally understand most varieties. Um, okay, um, can, someone said, this is so great, can I, uh, can I catch and join you at the live classes on Zoom? Yes, you can. I mean, I plan to do these classes for a good 80 or so weeks. I'm on the 13th or 14th week now. And so, yes, I plan to do these classes for a very long time. And I might even end up doing them in Spanish. So, but right now I'm doing them in English because English has the least amount of resources in Nahuatl. Um, but eventually I might do it in Spanish. And if you want to join me, you can join me. Just send me a personal message at, um, go on my Instagram, message me at Pakilistli, and then I can give you the code and everything. It's 7 p.m. Um, Fridays. Uh, let me see. Um, I enjoy your classes. Please don't delete them. I am not going to delete them. Like I said, they are going to be here as long as possible. I'm not going to delete them, OK? Um, now, I did have some issues with some copyright stuff, especially in, in with that Kahoot stuff. That's the reason I stopped doing Kahoot. But um, no, I'm not going to delete them. I want, these, I want this information available to everybody. So I want anybody who wants to put the effort to put the effort and learn now. Um, this someone asked me the word chikyot for magic. I don't think that a word I've never even heard of it. I don't even know where it comes from. <laughs> um, where did we get the program to open your dictionary? Uh, the name of that program is called Personal Lexicon. I did a whole class on that. So just go check out the class where I talk about dictionaries and then I'll, I give you specifically ways to download Personal Lexicon. Just Google it. I don't recommend that you use the mobile version. Some people commented in some of them that they were using the mobile version. Don't use the mobile version. It's going to crash on you. I promise it's not good. But the computer version is good. Use the computer version. Don't use the mobile phone. It exists in like iOS and I think in Android, the Personal Lexicon, but don't use it. I'm sorry, Personal Lexicon, you need work. <laughs> Okay, uh, are you a descendant of the Aztecs? The short answer to that is no. <laughs> yes, I freaking love Nahuatl, okay? But I'm actually not of Nahuatl descent. Um, I just find Nahuatl to be so beautiful. And um, I started as a dan Azteca dancer. And so Nahuatl was what a lot of people used. But the truth is I was born in Michoacan and I was um, born um, from, uh, I was born in an area that's so small that it's called La Soledad and it, you can't really find it on the map, but the closest uh, place uh, to it is called Sacapu. So Sacapu is, is actually a, a Purepecha word or as other people would like to say Tarascos, but they don't like that word. So I use Purepecha 
So chances are very high that my ancestry is more Purépecha than it is um, este, uh, Nahuatl. And in fact, the Purépecha were strong enemies of the Mexica and they were separate empires and the language that they have is completely different. And so I'm actually trying to learn that now and they are not the same, they are not the same language, they're very different, okay? Um, but they do have a, some agglutinating, they do a lot of, they add a lot of suffixes, so their words are also really long. But aside from that, there are very few words that actually interlock. And so my, uh, even though my background is not Nawa, I, I think love the language, and I don't think that it's a requirement for you to necessarily be of a certain descent to want to learn a language. We don't, um, just because um, I'm, uh, I'm not Italian doesn't mean I can't learn Italian just because I'm not um, from, I don't know if, if I'm not from Brazil doesn't mean I can't learn port a Brazilian Portuguese. Just because I'm not from Korea doesn't mean I can't learn Korean. Just because you're not from uh, Nahuatl or Mexica does not mean you cannot learn Nahuatl. Any language is completely open. So don't let other people decide for you what you can or cannot do. You effing do it for yourself. Okay. How do we sign up for the newsletter? Okay, uh, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, all you have to do is email me or message me on Pakilisli. Right now, I haven't really sent any newsletters because I'm having issues with the um, company that I use. Okay, I use a free company and, and it works, but for some reason, a good majority of the people don't ever actually open the email. So I'm just like, well, if, I'm, if only like 20% of the people who I sent the email to, which there's 700 people, but only 20% actually open it and actually read it well I'm like well should I really even send it um and then some people who want to open it for some reason don't get the email and I don't know if it goes to their spam or where it goes but basically they don't get the email so I'm just like kind of discouraged now in theory I could pay for it but since this is a free class I'm not necessarily paying for it and yes I guess I could use donations and maybe I will I'll use donations for that but as of right now um uh you can sign up for it but I haven't sent anything in a while but if you, I might, I might soon, okay? Uh, I admire you and I appreciate you. Well, thank you very much, Adrian Rivera. Thank you. I, um, I do really believe in myself and I, and I appreciate that other people admire me, but um, I'm doing this because I really want this information to be out there. I, I don't want you all to go through all the craziness that I went through just to effing find, just to freaking find this information it shouldn't be that hard and yet it is so that i don't agree with and that's why i make these classes uh, freely available uh okay that's video number two Ooh. Ooh, okay let's see <clears throat> Let's go to episode three. Let's read the email, uh, the comments on episode three. To be or not to be. Uh, um, how do uh, how do we get in on the class? I already explained that. Um, learning now what? I have a lot of aha moments as I learn. Okay, when the more you know what you learn, you'll start seeing how the language breaks down and what the like the thought process is of Nahuatl and you'll start to be like, oh my God, that's so like interesting the way that they like see things. And so you know how the language is agglutinating, you build bigger concepts by adding um, a lot of words, prefixes and suffixes to words. And when you break the, a lot of those down to their literal meaning, you're like, oh my God, that's so interesting that they see it this way or they see it this other way. And so, you know, when people say, oh, when you learn a language or when a language dies, you, you lose like a thought process. Well in Nahuatl it's very true and I think it's true for any language because um, the, the way that the language is constructed it, it tells you or you can see how they see the world. Um, I, I, um, I can't, can't think of any examples right now. The best one I can think of is momachtiket, which means student um, and then momachtiket means basically um, a, a person who believes in themselves. So um, that's why I like Nahuatl. Nahuatl is you, you, that's why I think it helps to learn the language. But a lot of people will say, oh, and the, this is something that's really sad in Mexico. They try to discourage you from learning the native language. And I think that it, that is not okay. Um, I am not a, a for that at all. 
uh, I think that every language should be learned. And the fact that a lot of Mexicans are ashamed of their native language, that makes me mad and sad because honestly, the richness of Mexico is all those languages, is all the knowledge from the native people, all the things that Mexican people praise and say, oh my God, this is like beautiful culture. The majority of that is actually native indigenous culture. Some of it is influenced by Spain, but yet the majority of it is actually not if you go and search, you know, in the past. So to me, it's weird and, and sad and, and it shouldn't be that way. And for that reason, I do these videos. And for that reason, I try to, I make art and I try to show people, look, you're Mexican, look at the beauty and look at all the things that you could learn. So honestly, you do you. I think you can be stronger if you don't fight who you are and instead embrace it and say, this is who I effing am and you're gonna take it. And that I believe makes you stronger. The, the fact that Mexicans are like, oh no, don't learn. Da, da, da. Oh, oh. I'm not okay with that. And I think that that makes you weaker. So if you're that kind of person, well, don't be my friend. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Um, out of curiosity, do you know the term yolteot? Does it mean heart of gold? Of uh, Sorry, heart of God. How do you pronounce it? So you pronounce the word yolteot and it, it, it does mean heart of God, but it kind of doesn't because it depends on what you, you what, what you're trying to say with the word teot. Now the conception of the Nahua people for the word teot has changed. Um, when before the arrival of the Spanish, the word teot was like the different deities that they um, that they praised or that they looked up to or or did ceremonies to, etc. And when the Spanish arrived, they interpreted it as gods. But whether or not they saw them as gods, I have no idea and I cannot say I'm not an expert on these things but um, heart of God also presumes that there's only one God whereas they may not see the word teot as simply one God. Now the conception of God has obviously changed because of indoctrination and the imposition of Christianity on Nahua people and so chances are now if you go and say that word teot they're gonna think the Christian God. It, I mean I read the Bible and so it says to, to teo, to teco Dios or whatever and so they may use that word. Now they just say Dio, Dios, they just say Dios but that conception of, of religion it has changed because of the arrival of Christianity and its imposition. So um, but if I but the literal meaning of yolteo it could mean like heart of God or heart god i would take there's a scene in classical nahuatl where the order does matter if you say yolteot it's not the same thing as heart of god it would more be god heart or heart god it mean it, mean, it would mean heart god not god of heart heart of god it would mean heart god but anyways heart god basically um the answer is yes, the basic answer is yes, but uh, whether you translate it as God, that's the complicated part. Because Teo could also be like energy, it kind of depends. Honestly, I'm not an expert on that, but it depends. So like I said. <laughs> All right, uh, video number four, but not to be or not to be. Um, Someone says, Tlazocamati no yolitni. Gracias, hermano en corazón. Thank you, brother in the heart. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed, but um, so far I've, I've been, I've, call you, I've called you all no wampo yowan, which is the Huasteca way to say uh, friend is wampo. But um, yolikni is the um, Guerrero way to say friend, and it literally comes from the word yolot, heart, and iknik. Um, brother or sister, sibling. So Yolikni really means like brother of the heart or um, sibling of the heart. And so I personally like using the word Yolikni because it's nicer and prettier than Wampo because I don't know the origins of Wampo. But um, 
that I like that one, but it's more used in West in Guerrero than it is in West. But I personally like it. Um, someone says, um, so oh, someone had asked where Isabella comes from, and apparently Jeremy Cohen says Isabella comes from the Hebrew name Elisheba, which means God is abundance. I don't know whether or not this true. This is true. I don't speak Hebrew. I cannot. Um, verify that that's true, but that's what somebody said because somebody had, had asked, where does Isabella, where does Isabella come from um, in that Nahuatl session? And so um, I cannot attest to the truth of that claim. Um, and I will also like to say that a lot, there's a lot of memes out there for Nahuatl that are inaccurate. Like they like to say that apapachar means abrazar con el alma. Or to hug somebody with your heart or whatever. Um, that's not actually true. Apapachar, it, it comes from the verb papachoa in Nahuatl. And it just means to, to hug or, or caress or what. I don't exactly mean, but it does not mean to hug with the heart. <laughs> um, it, it comes from papachoa. Let me double check where papachoa comes from. But basically, what I'm trying to tell you is there is means and, and inaccurate information out in the world and there and there's actually a lot of them in Nahuatl. Just make sure that you like double verify, like look it up in the dictionary or try to find the origins of the word because you, you will get misinformed a lot. And I, like I said, I don't know everything, but you should you do like your research and, and look stuff up because like there's a lot of inaccuracies out there, but um, uh, at least apapachar is semi-accurate because it does come from the verb papachoa, so it is a legit word, but um, but it doesn't mean to uh, hug with the hug with the with the soul like like people like to translate. Um, what's the difference between chichi and it's quintly? Uh, chichi. Honestly, I don't know 100% the difference, but some people, um, I, as far as I understand, it's quinkly is the central way to say dog and chichi is the Huasteca way to say dog. I understand both and I think both are used. Ha, um, however, um, I think the confusion sometimes lies in the word um, because there's a, this a, other dog called Xolo Itzcuintli, which is this hairless Mexican dog. And so I believe maybe this that's where that word Itzcuintli comes from. Um, I'm not sure, but as far as I know, Itzcuintli just means dog. Um, and it, it's just a different one used in a different region. I could be wrong about that. Uh, papachoa, papachoa, papachoa. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, those are all the questions from video number four. Or, or now what to be or not to be part two. Let's go to uh, my house, your house. No calmo cal. Let's see what you've said in this video. Not that many comments. Let's see. Uh, uh, so uh, Crystal says, I love your lessons. I am learning a lot and I'm studying every day. Please keep up with your lessons. We can't let this language die. Okay, Crystal, I want to commend you for, for um, saying that you're studying every day. I admire people who, who start something and stick to it and finish it. If you just start stuff and don't actually finish it, well, what's the point of starting? That's my perspective, honestly. Okay, so I commend you on that. I completely agree with you. I Like I said, I'm going to keep posting lessons and I'm going to do uh, quite a bit. I'm going to cover so much. Um, that's the goal. And I agree that we can let this language die. I believe this language is so freaking beautiful. <laughs> and now that I understand it, like it just makes it so, like I said, there's even, po there's poetry out there in, in Nahuatl. Once you like kind of break it down, you're like, oh, that's so like, once you start being able to read it, you're like, oh, that's so, that's elegant, that's beautiful. So, um, yeah, I don't think that the language should die. And honestly, part of me thinks like uh, Mexicans need to embrace this more and like learn the richness of their own, like their own culture and language and just like embrace it. Because like I said, that, that'll make them stronger, not weaker, stronger. 
and it also is should be something of pride not not sh shame but pride <clears throat> uh, uh, since there was no less okay um somebody uh jeremy cowan asks when you talk about stringing nouns stringing nouns you use the word nonancin and you explain that the that they seldom um, use the absolute nantly, but then when using the word, it usually it, it usually takes the honorific. How does the plural work with the tsin suffix? Um, would our mothers be tonantsin one? Ah, okay. I'm eventually gonna do a class on tsin, and I actually didn't cover all the um, prefixes in Nahuatl or suffixes in Nahuatl, and so um, let's see. So let's do question number two. Um, so thin, the thin um, suffix, thin suffix. Okay, this is like reverential, reverential. Um, that's like the grammatical term for it. And essentially, this is this is something that you add to uh, nouns to make them nice, to make them sound like. Um, pleasant and i think tin sounds pleasant as a sound itself so like we use nansin right um so this that's the singular form to say one mother nansin or tenansin somebody's mother right <clears throat> tenansin tenansin somebody's mother it also means something else like it means like lady in in uh, huasteca uh, lady or someone's mother or someone's mother someone's mother Okay, but uh, that's the sin is the singular form, meaning when you only have one mother, singular. But if you have more than one, it would be titsin, titsin, plural. So in other words, if I say plural, plural, if I say one, um, if well, it kind of. I guess you, oh, well, okay. If you were to say um, no, no chichi, you could you could talk about your um, your dog that you really love and you say no chichitzin, right? No chichitzin, no chichitzin, okay? Oh, I should make this font bigger, huh? Let's make this font bigger. All right, so that way you all who are watching can like see it better. Okay, so no chichitzin, right? But if you have, if you want to say my dogs, like a lot of dogs that you like love and and appreciate, you would say no chi, chi, no chi, chi, sitzin. Ooh. Ooh, so I just noticed something. Okay, <laughs> you could say no chichitzin. So so chichitzin. So actually, let me let me take away the no for now, because <laughs> that's gonna complicate things. No, so basically, uh, a dog that you love or appreciate, you would say no chichi uh, chichitzin, and more than one would be no uh, uh, chichitzin. Okay, so that titzin is the plural form of tin. Now it does become a little bit complicated when you actually start possessing it, which is why I said, oh, it was a little bit complicated. So once you possess one singular dog, there's, there's not a problem. You would say no chi chi sin. That's easy, right? My dogs, my dog, like one that you appreciate a lot. But if you wanna say more than one that you appreciate, it would actually be no chi chi chi. Actually, there's two ways to do it. Chi 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 sin one. So if you remember in the in the past, we learned that when you possess more than one um, more than one noun that is alive, you add this one, right? No chi. So if this was one dog, it would be no chi chi. If it was more than one more than two dogs, it would be no chi chi one, right? But with this sin, it would be no chi 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 sin one. So this word is really long, but it would be no chichi titin one, and this would be like the dogs that I really like, and I think that that sounds really beautiful, <laughs> no chichi titin one, <laughs> and so my dogs. But there's actually two ways to do it. You could also do it this way: no chichi one titin. Those are both acceptable uh, ways to do it. 
And remember, this only applies to animate nouns that you possess. It, um, you could you could um, say like noamosh sin, noamosh sin. My book that I appreciate and love. <laughs> um, but it, remember, um, they can be pluralized, so it's really also my books. So there's no um, no amosh titin one. That's not traditionally the case. Okay. So yeah, so that's one grammatical thing, and maybe I'll, I'll make a class on that. But basically, that's that's the gist of it. Um, so he asked me, how would you say my mothers or my parents? It would be to. Uh, he says, would our mothers be tonantin one? It would be tonantitin one. Okay, Kuali. All right, that's there's less and less comments in each video, so I guess this class will pass better. <laughs> All right, Kuali. Um, next, uh, okay, who are you? Okay, class, Akia, who are you? Uh, Okay. Okay. None of these questions are really about now, so I'm not going to answer them. But feel free to feel free to read them later <laughs> on your own personal time that you have sometimes. I guess. So none of those questions were about now. Um, so we're skipping it. Let's see what the comments are in uh, six. Uh, okay. This is a good question. I like this question. Chimali Institute of Mesoamerican Arts asks for pluralized actions, mati moketsakan, shimoketsakan, or mati tlakwakan, etc. Is the final N silent? Okay. Yeah, the answer to that is yes and no. Okay, in other in some varieties of Nahuatl, that N, that final N, and not just in these words, but the final N in a lot of words is silent. In the variety that we're learning, which is Huastecanahuatl, generally the N is silent. So even though we write and we say mati moketsakan with the N, it's really generally most people are going to say mati moketsaka and they're going to aspirate mati moketsaka. Or they're not going to say shi moketsakan, they're going to say shi moketsaka. A lot of final ends are dropped. Instead of mati tlakwakan, it would be mati tlakwaka. And then you're gonna ask me, well, why do we write the end then? Which, by the way, is legitimate. I don't like silent letters, <laughs> but it turns out that some other varieties are not what do pronounce the end, like central varieties like uh, Guerrero. So you, they will say mati moketsakan, uh, shin moketsakan. And um, there are some varieties of Huasteca who actually do pronounce the end. And some that pronounced uh, at the end in plurals. Um, so the answer to that is it, it depends on what region of Nahuatl, uh, of Nahuatl you're learning. Some of them are going to pronounce the end. Some of them are not going to pronounce the end. Uh, the reason why it is because other varieties do. And in our variety, we don't. But I like it because I, I don't really like silent letters. So I personally pronounce it. And some native speakers are probably going to criticize me for that. But straight up, I don't necessarily worry about it or care. <laughs> I pretty much say Timo Ketsakan and they will understand you, but like I said, a native speaker who speaks fast is just say Matimo Ketsakan and they're gonna skip the end. Okay. So just be aware that that is a thing. That's a real thing. And I'm not gonna criticize you as long as I understand you. So I really care about, I don't care about whether it's correct or wrong or this is the um this is what everybody else is doing. Um there See, and if you take a lot of linguistics, which I didn't, but I just like linguistics, and so I read, a, I read it and watch a lot of things, there's this thing where like people are like, oh, oh, like you, you even just even consider the language that you speak English, like when you went to school, they taught you the quote unquote proper English that you were supposed to speak and every other type of English was not correct, like they were like, they were like oh, but you know, ain't is not a word or whatever they would tell you. But you have to remember that there's different types of English and there's also different types of Nahuatl. And so there's not necessarily one type of English or, or Nahuatl, that's the correct one. Now, there are people out there who are purists and they're like, oh, this is the correct way to say it. And personally, I think that those people are wrong. I think that there's so much variety, but of course there has to be like a standard version of a language so that they could teach it in school and tell you that you're wrong and that there's a right and a wrong answer. 
But truth be told, the, the amount of variety that exists in languages is so varied and, and there's like so much detail that honestly, language is like, a, like kind of a continuum in every language. So like, there isn't really a right or wrong, in my opinion. Um, and so meh, those people who are like, mm, there's a correct way to speak English. Meh. And there's the correct way to speak that one. Meh. Do you understand me? If the answer to that is yes, then in my mind, that's the correct way. And that's, and that's what we should be talking about. Okay. <laughs> and that, uh, do not get me started on grammar and like, oh, no, I uh, just, do you understand me? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, it's right. Now leave me alone. <laughs> that's what I think. Okay. Uh, anyway, anyways. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, what, what, um, let's go back to, oh, that was, okay, that's the one we just did, which was Canintiguala, where you come from. I hope this link, this video doesn't take too long, because, I mean, there are 13 lessons. Uh, let's see. Are you, gonna, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, we already did this one. Transitive part two. I don't think we're gonna do transitive part two. Go back. Ah. Technical difficulties, yo. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, oh, no, okay, we can ignore that question. Okay, this is a good question. Jeremy Cohen, good for you for having these good questions. It says, in the homework, you have the word ikoton, his shirt. And personal lexicon file that you gave us lists the word for shirt to be the word kotomit. And in Guerrero, kotontli. Yes, great observation. You know what? Good for you for doing your research. I sincerely appreciate that. Thus, I would expect ikotomi in Huasteca. Is there a Guerrero word also used in Huasteca? Are there some unusual letter changes that make both of the versions go ikoton? Did you accidentally use the wrong word in the homework? That is a possibility. Please help me with this. What's going on here? <clears throat> All right, let me tell you something. Like I said in, in the class, there are certain exceptions that I didn't tell you about, and that's actually one of them, and that's why I put it in the, um, in the homework. So actually what's going on here is that there are certain, uh, come on, why isn't this working? Oh, okay. Uh, 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 okay. Techno technical difficulties, y'all. <laughs> I don't know why that wasn't working. Anyways, um, okay. Ooh, gotta go the other way. All right. So, um, so nouns that end in MITL, those are irregular nouns when they are possessed. So um, for example, the word kotomit is how they say shirt in Huasteca, like um, Jeremy Cohen said. So uh, kotomit is shirt in Huasteca. And, um, and like he said in, in Guerrero, it is kotontli. Now, it does make sense to say my shirt would be no cotton. No, he said his shirt. So for his shirt in Guerrero, it kind of, it does make sense, right? Cotontli, Guerrero. In Guerrero, it makes sense. Cotontli becomes y cotton, his shirt. Cotontli y cotton, because you just dropped the TLA, right? But it turns out that in the Huasteca region, or in, in this is also, this also applies to all Nahuatl nouns, <laughs> not just in the Huasteca region, it's just that they say kotomit in the Huasteca region. Anyways, kotomit, the, those MITL nouns, that M becomes uh, an N. So it it's still ikoton. So in other words, both varieties say ikoton. It's consistent across both of them. But pretty much all varieties, as far as I know, the ones that nouns that end in MITL, they, uh, when they are possessed, they become M's. So I'll give you another example. Um, uh, the word for your, uh, clothes is yoyomit, yoyomit. And this is the Huasteca way, because there's also trakentli uh, in other varieties. But okay, okay, so yoyomit, and then it would be iyoyon, iyoyon. 
his or her shirt. Um, sorry, his or her clothes. Um, another word, tecomit, jar, tecomit, tecomit. It would be itecot, itecon, itecon. His, um, his or her jar, or um, yeah, bowl or jar, tecomit. Okay, so basically that's why I put those questions in the homework. And if you're not doing the homework, well, you're missing out on valuable lessons and exceptions. And that's why I'm doing this class because I know that uh, you aren't actually doing the homework, which is fine, you don't have to, but I'm telling you, you'll learn more. Okay, you'll have good questions. Okay, but that was a good question. Okay, uh, that was a really good question. So that was Let's go to the next one. And let's see if anybody had questions on the generator. Oh, yeah. Someone asks, uh, PSeeker049 says, had anyone had any success with the mobile version of personal lexicon? Like I told you, don't use the mobile version of personal lexicon. It's a mess and it just crashes. I don't know if it's our file because our file is semi big. It's not that big. It's only like eight megabytes, eight megabytes. But for some reason, it doesn't work. It just crashes. So don't use it. Just use the computer um, form of it. Uh, uh, I have a question. Translate this word for me. Nimititlanilia. So actually, this person has a typo right there. It's supposed to be nimits titlanilia, and nimits titlanilia means I send this to you. And so he gives you, he gives you, and he gives me an example. He says it makes sense now. Nimits nimits titlanilia se shochitla paloli no yolikniwan. So nimits titlanilia it means I send to you se a shochitla paloli. It means like a um. Uh, hug. No, saludo. So, uh, yeah. So, se xochitlapaloli is like saludo, but they added the word xochitlapaloli. So, it's kind of like a very nice greeting because they're adding the word for flower and greeting, tlapaloli. So, xochitlapaloli has got to be something like a pretty greeting. So, saying like, I, I send you like a warm greeting. And then it says, no, yo ni one, my friends. Remember this per this person um, is saying, no, yo ni one. So, they're saying, my friends. Like I told you, that's, that's I like that word a lot, honestly. <laughs> no, yo ni one. So, basically, ni mis titlanilia se xochitlapaloli, no, yo ni one. I send you all. Uh, like a, a very warm greeting, uh, my friend, is what that says. Okay, uh, the Tetlamo class, let's see. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, are your videos of the Huasteca now what? Yes, please watch my introduction. <laughs> I can't. But basically, if you're if you're watching this video and you're not watching the introduction, which was season one, episode one introduction, go watch my introduction. But basically, this is the Huasteca Nahuatl uh, from Chicontepec, Veracruz, which is where a lot of my uh, teachers came from. So that's the variety I'm teaching you. Um, and somebody asks, oh, yes, hablas español? Sí, hablo español. N nací en México. Nací en Michoacán. Uh, Crecí en los Estados Unidos, pero uh, uh, de vez en cuando me, me, me trabo, no, no digo las cosas la manera más perfecta o correcta como, se, como la gente piensa que se debe decir. Cuando voy a México, la gente me, me, me dice que, oh, que de dónde eres, de dónde viene tu español, porque no pueden identificar de qué parte de México viene mi español o de otra parte, pero es porque el español que uso tiene mucha influencia del inglés porque hablo más inglés más frecuentemente o más, es más común, pero por lo general entiendo todo, me puedo expresar por lo general, aunque lo expreso un poco diferente, lo puedo expresar y entiendo todo. Entonces conmigo no hay problema, como les dije, en el futuro va a haber una clase en español. Y Quizás me trabaré, pero no me importa. Eso es lo que no, lo que importa es la meta y, y que se cumpla. <laughs> Anyways, for you all who start an issue, essentially, I said, yes, I do. And don't judge me. And essentially, my Spanish has a lot of English from English, but I understand practically everything that you tell me. 
when I go to Mexico, they comment like, oh, where does your Spanish come from? And I'm like, well, it comes from, it comes from Japan, but it has a lot of influence from English because I grew up speaking a lot, a lot of English, but I can still express myself as I want to or should. And in the future, I might actually have a, a Spanish version of a class. Okay. Uh, let's see, can in the eat stock, did we do that one? Can in the stock, can in the stock. Thank you for the thank you for these lessons. Phil Sav Savioski says I'm Russian, but I love the sounds of the Nahuatl language. Well, thank you very much. Like I said, you don't have to be a Nahuatl descent to want to learn Nahuatl. I have a student who's from Poland. She's learning it for archaeological purposes. Um, uh, I don't discriminate. I don't think that people should. I think that this information should be available to everybody. Um, thank. Uh, um, I didn't know the way that you, uh, Tien, I can't say his name very well, but I think that's Vietnamese, Tien Huyen Phu Rock. I probably mispronounced it. I'm sorry. I apologize. He says, I didn't know that the way you say prepositions like beside or in front of is, is so elegant. Computer el tok no ishpan. Awa mostly el tok no nakastlan. Okay, so I can tell that this person studied some um, classical Nahuatl because they're using the word au, and that's a classical Nahuatl way to say but or and. It depends on the context. But this person is computer, el toc no ishpan. The computer is in front of me, and I'm mostly el toc no nakas, and the computer's next to me um, or beside me. Like I said, Nahuatl, the way that a language is constructed, it does teach you the way that they, that Nahuas or just people in general, how they think. And like I told it, like, no, Ishpan literally means on my face, in front of my face. And then Anonakasana uh, means on in my ears or at my ears. So like I said, this kind of tells you like how Nawas conceive of the world. And I, I think it's elegant and beautiful and different. <laughs> okay, Kanin the eat stock, let's do that one. Uh, uh, here's people saying, Jesus says, I just want to say thank you for keeping the series going. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to keep making the series uh, going. Um, and, and then it says, people are busy. He's busy with school and um, he's glad that he can access these videos at any time. That's why I'm making them on YouTube. So you can watch them at your own pace, fast forward, rewind, hear me again, ask me again. You know, watch my hand gestures again or whatever you want to do. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so yeah, watch them at your own pace. You do you. You effing do you. Um, oh, okay. So Eastly Ehekak says, can't 34 be Sempowali i Wanmatlakli Wanawi? Yes. Okay, so the numbering system in Nahuatl is complicated because like I said, originally the Nahuatl uh, numbering system was in the base 20. So the word for 20 in Nahuatl is sempowali. It literally means one count. Powali is a count and se sempowali means one count. So if you could count from one to 20 in Nahuatl, you're, the first count is sempowali, which is 20. So the base is 20. So um, the issue is that the problem is that in the Western world or in, in Spain, they use, or now we use the ba base 10 system. And so that causes problems with the Nahuatl numbering system because you have to interconvert between base 20 and base 10. And so what a lot of Nahuatl uh, native speakers do is they, after 20, they pretty much just use the Spanish equivalent of the number. One, maybe because it's more practical because of the people that they interact with and the numbers that they come in contact with. And two, because a lot of them don't actually know the numbers. They don't, can't count. Um, they were never taught or uh, they don't know all the numbers and can't count higher. And then three, another reason is because the numbers in Nahuatl, once you go uh, like uh, past a certain number, the numbers get so long and even the words are really long. And so even saying like, like here 34 in Spanish would be like 34, 34, 34. That's five syllables, right? So 34. But if you wanted to say now what, it would be simple, simple, wali, iwan, matlakli, 
one nawi or nawi if you want to. Um, so that's 10 syllables. So it's tw it takes twice the amount of time. So maybe for practical reasons, people don't use it. I don't know. I personally can do either one and I'm in favor of keeping the number system consistent with Nahuatl, but then that also means that you have to do a lot of math in your head. And if you're able to do math and be a, a badass mathematician, which you can be and you shouldn't limit yourself, then you can and should use the Nahuatl numbers, but they are base 20. And maybe I'll, I'll have a class on just using that. Um, doing that. I think it's necessary. Uh, did I? I think. Oh, I don't know. Or uh, let's see. Oh, I, I do have comments on that one, but they're not about now. What did I cover this one or not? Oh, yeah, I guess I did all the questions and all the comments. <laughs> Quali. Okay. So I hope that you got a, got a lot of value from those questions that I answered. But now we're gonna do a homework session. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of the homeworks one by one. And I'm not gonna give you all the answers. Obviously you have all the answers, but I'm gonna look through them real quickly and like identify which ones are kind of tricky or kind of um, probably hard to understand or, or, or hard, kind of like probably tripped you out. And so, um, I think that that will hopefully help you. So let me know if it does. And if you have more questions that I didn't cover, like they weren't covered in the comments um, today and they weren't covered in any previous, um, um, previous videos, then all you need to do is leave the comment in this video and I, I will eventually get to it in a future video. I usually do respond on the text if I'm like not too busy. And so, um, you know, just know that I'm here for, to answer all your questions and I'm not 100% accurate all the time, but um, I'll try to get you as best answer as I can. Okay, Kuali, we're gonna look at the homework. I'm gonna start with uh, homework number two. And in homework number two, it was all about alphabet and stress. So let me share the screen and hopefully you have so I'm gonna look at the answers. So this homework, homework number two, which was all about pronunciation, there really isn't much to say here other than um, you need to practice your pronunciation. It's pretty self-explanatory. I try to write it in the way that uh, an a English speaker would try to pronounce it, but it's probably easier um, if you think about it like the Spanish speaker word would if you speak Spanish, but if you don't, then essentially you're gonna use these as your guide, but the, the writing system, since it was borrowed from Spanish, it makes really clear sense in Spanish. Okay, I also wrote the um, translations on the right. Um, one of the one, trickier ones that was in this one was the difference between kawit, tree, kawit, sorry, ka, see, I messed it up. <laughs> kawit, time, uh, Quawit uh, tree and quatli or quatli depends on which variety um, eagle. So as you can tell on the on 14, 15, and 16, these words are very similar. But um, see, kawit is missing the qua, so it's it's kawit. Um, it's very similar to quawit, and they mean something different. So kawit is time, quawit is tree, and so that's something to be aware of. And then qua. In our writing, we say quatli, quatli. This UH would be silent. And in uh, Central or like Guerrero, they would say quatli, or if you're older, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Other than that, I didn't think anything else was that much tricky. Oh, yeah, the word yolot and the yolotli. Okay. So, like I said, Nahuatl is a very varied language, <laughs> has a lot of variation. So, you might see yolot, you might see yolotli. And so one of the things that I want to emphasize is that like you're going to hear people say, oh, well, in my variety, we say this and in my variety, we say that. And you're, what you're going to do is you're going to be like, sounds good. Quali. <laughs> Quali. Tlazocamati pampatine chili. Thank you for telling me. Uh, nimis tlazocamati lia. I thank you. <coughs> but there are varieties that break some of the rules that I told you. And like I said, my class is like a guide. So um, 
it's the guide for the Chicontepec variety, but there's gonna be some varieties that are gonna be like, well, in my variety, this word means this other thing. Like for example, let me an example, the word qualantli, okay. In our variety, qualantli, it means a problem. But if you look at the, uh, at the root of the word qualantli, it comes from the verb qualani, to get angry. So in our variety, qualantli is the noun form of the verb angry, to get angry, qualantli, a problem, something that makes you angry. Okay, so, so one time I used the word qualantli with a different variety of Nahuatl and he was like, well, why, do you, why are you saying qualantli? What does that mean? Because in his variety, qualantli means um, something like something that makes you angry, which it kind of does mean a problem does make you angry. So in our variety, qualantli has changed to mean a problem, to mean the word problem. But in his variety, qualantli means the basic idea of being angry at something or something that makes you angry. So he's like, oh, why do you keep saying something that makes you angry? I'm like, oh, I'm meaning problem because that's what it means in my writing. So if he's like, oh, well, this is how we say it. Well, that's fine for you. And you know, you do you, like I said, <laughs> um, but uh, don't like fight people because if they're native speakers, they're probably right. Not always, like just because you're a native speaker doesn't mean you're 100% always educated on the grammatical structure of your language or you, you know, everything or that you can't make errors, you can make errors, but um, just know that like sometimes there are right, the way that they say something is the way that they say something, <laughs> okay? So in this class, uh, which was to be or not to be, the main emphasis was for you to be able uh, to create simple sentences and um, with being and not being. So the main focus of this is knowing that in Nahuatl is, is implied. So like even in these sentences, like inin ash siwat, this is not a woman. So inin ash siwat, notice the verb word is inin, this, ash not, and siwat, inin ash siwat. Okay, so there is no verb there in Nahuatl that means is, but we, um, we uh, we use in Nahuatl the main thing for the present tense is to know that is is implied all the time. So here I give you a tons of examples of where is is not there, but we, we you can still say is in Nahuatl. Nahuatl uses a series of prefixes to identify is, but I want to say that this only applies to the present tense. In the past tense, in future tense, conditional tense, uh, plus quam perfect, a whole bunch of other tenses. There is a word and that word is Eli. Now in class course number one, I'm not gonna teach you these tenses, but in course number two, when I, when I eventually get there, um, I'm gonna give you all these different types of tenses. And at one point I'm gonna do another one on is, and you'll be like, you'll, you'll learn how to use Eli. Eli is a very special verb, but essentially it's is. And I also wanna say that Eli is the, on, is the one used in the Huasteca region, but other varieties, don't, they don't use Eli, they use Yetok, or they might use um, katka or yes, or yes. So, and it kind of depends on the region. So ours is Elis. I understand all of them. You just have to learn learn and read more eventually you will too, but just for now where this is what we're gonna do. Um, uh, so for example, ta ashkana titlamachtiket. Okay, uh, one thing that I wanna say is that so in number 23, there are, in this, in my answers, I didn't put all the possible answers because Nahuatl is so flexible that there are so many possibilities of a way to write it. So I couldn't just like write every single possibility. So in this, this word, ta ashkana titlamachtiket, it means you are not a teacher. But there, this ta is optional, okay? I could have just said ashkana titlamachtiket. You are not a, a teacher, right? Without the ta, the ta is not necessary. You can just say ashkana titla mashiket. And even the word ashkana, in future lessons, you're gonna, you learned that ashkana has three, three possibilities. You say amo, or actually in this lesson, it was in this lesson. You say amo, you say ashkana, or you could say ash, and that ash is a prefix. So this could be ta ashkana titla mashiket, ta amo titla mashiket, ta ash titla mashiket. Or it could just be without all of these ta or ashkana, it could just be ashtitlamachtiket. All those possibilities are okay in Nahuatl. Nahuatl is so much more flexible than Spanish or English. It's in, especially in, in, in a lot of, like, a lot of um, 
sentences. It's not as concrete. And so sometimes you're like, well, is it right or wrong? Ugh. It's, and another question people ask me is like the word order and the word order is also so flexible and now what? And so sometimes I can't really actually answer the question other than to tell you whether or not it sounds right to me. And, all, and if you go and learn, um, classical Nahuatl, you're going to learn that there is a very concrete um, order, but that concrete order has been lost through time. And so that concrete order is not no longer used. And so a lot of it has morphed and combined to be very similar to Spanish. But Nahuatl still has its own little characteristics, okay, that are, are special to, to um, it. Um, some of the notable ones here is like the I am Diego. So in this, in this example, um, I, I wanted you, you to realize that if you say ni, ni and any noun, it doesn't matter if it's a name or whatever noun you pick, if you add one of those prefixes, you're basically saying is. So even though I say ni tlamashtiket, I'm a teacher, that's, that tlamashtiket is a noun. But you could also say ni Diego, ti Diego, Diego, or ya Diego. So, ni Diego, I am Diego, ti Diego, you are Diego, ya Diego, or nothing, you just say Diego, he or she is Diego. I don't go by pronouns of, he, of she, but, you know, just to be consistent. Um, so, putting those prefixes is the is in that one. Uh, for example, here where we said ya Pedro, he is Pedro. Here, the ya means he or she. So, ya Pedro means he, Pedro. So, it's just, he is Pedro. There's no is there. And so in a third person, when you're talking about somebody else, it's kind of ambiguous if you just say the word Pedro, if it means Pedro or if it means is Pedro. And in Nahuatl, it kind of does, it kind of means both. So essentially, if somebody asks you the question, are you Pedro, ti Pedro? You could say, Kena, ni Pedro, or is he Pedro, ya Pedro? And you say Pedro or ya Pedro, etc. So Nahuatl is more flexible than like English. There's There doesn't have to be like an actual verb there and like a beginning and an end because it's it's a complete sentence in Nahuatl. Um, so that's something that you will eventually get used to. And so there's some sentences here, like these long ones, like Ashkana inin amo se totot, um, where there is no, no, there's no verb there. Ashkana, no, inin, it, um, this, amo, not. Se, a bird, totot. No, this is not a a um, bird. But there is there. There's no verb here. But that is the whole sentence in Nahuatl. There may not be a verb. That's just the nature of, of this language. So it's a different way of constructing. Okay. Let's see in questions. Class number four. Oh, oh this one doesn't have any answers. Okay. Okay. So let's see some hard ones. What was the point of this class? Oh, this the main point of this class was knowing the difference between plural nouns that are animate and plural nouns that are inanimate. So here, when I when we're talking about turtles and we're saying um, inin inin ome ayome, here we're pluralizing ayot, which is turtle. Inin ome ayome, these are two turtles. So. Um, that, that's different from inin ome amoshli, these are two books. So it doesn't matter how many books you have, you're going to always keep it as amoshli, but when you have more than one turtle, it's ayome. So that was the main uh, um, issue. Oh, another thing that I didn't really mention in class, but in Nahuatl, these phrases by, you can you can just say ni tlaka, like I am a man. But in Nahuatl, to ask the question, are you a man or am I a man, there is no question of is or isn't, like there is no is, right? So to say, am I this? Are you that? You just say the thing that you are, but then you change the intonation. So ni tlakat is I'm a man, right? But if you want to say, am I a man? It would be ni tlakat, kind of like you do in Spanish, like more, well, I guess you don't do, so soy hombre, right? Soy hombre, but soy hombre, soy hombre, soy hombre, it's really the intonation. And so um, the, the Nahuatl does the same thing. There doesn't have to be an actual verb there. So ni tlakat, I'm a man, or ni tlakat, am I a man? It's the intonation that's changing. Um, I gave you a lot of different variety uh, with adding pronouns and not adding pronouns. So just so you could see that now it's flexible. And I hope I gave you enough. Oh, another thing I want to point out is in the, in the homework, I added parentheses se. 
So inin serekoa. Those things that I put in parentheses, it's because they are optional. Okay. Um, so you don't, you can or don't have to put them there. So for example, a teacher is a person. Okay, you could say it as se te machtiket se masewali. That's the whole sentence. A teacher is a student, or sorry, is a person. Se te machtiket se masewali. But you could have just said te machtiket se masewali or te mach um, te machtiket masewali. The, those three forms that I gave you. Those are all equivalent and okay. Actually, you can even say sete mashtiket masewali without the, all the sets. So there's four possibilities in this sentence. A teacher is a person. That's why I put it in parentheses. But now what is flexible, you don't, this say this article of a thing is not actually necessary in what By just saying the noun, the article is implied. So a, a house is sekali or just kali. You don't need to say a in what You can if you want to, but you don't have to. So like se chichi ashma se wali. A dog is not a person. Okay, you could just say chichi ashma se wali. Okay. Um, you could not say se chichi se ashma se wali. That would be weird. Uh, and I think it's just because of the this prefix ashma se wali. It, it, it's weird to have se and then ash, like as a separate word, and then ash masewali. It seems weird to me. Um, ash nichime. Oh, okay. So one thing that I wanted to say in the pluralization of nouns, and let me actually put that. There are a lot of exceptions in the pluralization of nouns. And so even though the word for michin ends in in like this, you would think it would be michme, right? But it's, it's not michme. This is not. Can I do a strike through? Let's see. Let's see if it gets in here. Okay, well, that's not the correct way. To, it's not michme. And if you paid attention to my rules, you would have thought that michin would have been michme. The thing is that now it doesn't like those bunches of, of, um, of um, consonants all so close to each other. So generally, Nahuatl will add an extra I to things. So michme doesn't sound right to a Nahuatl speaker, so say michime. So there are a lot of exceptions like that. Not that many, but they, they, they exist. So even though those rules that I gave you are somewhat concrete, like I said, there are exceptions. Um, for the most part, the, adding the me to a noun is, is the way that they pluralize, um, um, is the way that they pluralize nouns in Guasteca Nahuatl, the one that we speak. But like I said, there's other varieties that add T-I-N, thing. So even though we say Michime, other forms are Michtin. You might see Mimichtin, Mimichtin. Or you might see Michtin. Or you might even see Mimichme. No, I've never seen Mimichme. But now what is so flexible, so like just knowing the structure of it is what helps. Don't necessarily worry about so concretely like some of the rules. The rules are like a guide. And you can follow them and they'll be good, but just know that there's exceptions. Okay, let me see. What are the other questions? Other chantequites. Oh, let me see other things that I noticed here. Um, there's always all that confusion of the na, the ta, the ya, to huantin, ni mo huantin, and ini huantin. Okay, one thing that I want to say about the word ini huantin, which means they, is that that's the way that they say in Huasteca Nahuatl, the Chicontepec one that we speak. But other varieties of Huasteca Nahuatl, they actually say ya huantin. Okay, let me write it for you. So ini huantin, ini huantin, ini huantin is the same thing as ya huantin. And other varieties even say ye huantin. Ye huantin. I think that's how they say it in um, classical, ye huantin. Okay, so there's so much varieties in these pronouns. The, I, I taught you the ones that we use, but there's a lot of variety. So eventually, once you learn a lot of now what, you'll run into them and you'll be like, what the heck does that mean? And I'll be like, okay, it's in one of those other pronouns. And they're, they are very similar to each other, but there's a lot of variety. So just know that the ones we learn, they're acceptable, 
but other varieties use different ones. I personally like the Yahuanting over the Ini Huanting because the Ini Huanting is a little bit confusing to a new beginner because Ini Huanting looks very similar to Imo Huanting. Imo Huanting is y'all, right? Y'all, ustedes. But it looks so similar to Ini Huanting, which means they. And um, I don't like it for that reason. So I wish that we would just switch to Yahuantin or Yahuantin. That's my opinion. Uh, okay, seriously. Okay, so anyways. <laughs> um, oh, this is another one. This is not me, this is not you. I wanted to put these examples in there because the reason that these pronouns matter so much is because you do use them in some situations. Like in these cases where you say, this is not me, ini na mo na. That's when you would really you use them. But a lot of the times you don't actually need them. Um, like I told you, a lot of times you're gonna use those prefixes, ni, ti, and um, in, majority of the time. So if you wanna add emphasis, you can add the nata, ya, yeah, et cetera. But you can, when these sentences were like, this is not me, and where the only thing that you're talking about is you or I, that's really when you use the na or the ta or the ya. Yeah. And a lot of time you don't really use them. Okay. No cal mocal. Okay. Ah. Uh, this this homework I had to cross out the ending. I had you I had you cross out the ending because I wanted to emphasize the fact that you need to drop the ending. And a lot of people don't do it. Like they'll be like no metsly <laughs> instead of no mets. Um and that's why I wrote it in there. I, I do want to say, like, again, there are some varieties that don't drop the endings. I don't agree with it because that's not the normal, typical, traditional way to do it. So there are some that are going to say no coscat, and there are some that are going to say easy tlalin. But in our variety, we don't, and I was trying to keep it consistent. And in classical Nahuatl, we drop the ending. In Huasteca Nahuatl, we drop the ending. In Guerrero Nahuatl, they drop the ending. But there are some varieties that don't drop the ending, okay? So, but for you, I wanted to emphasize that you do. And over here, when when I made you cross out the me, um, it, it was because, it was because I want to emphasize that when you have no siwa, one woman, my woman, my, my, my woman, my, me, well, by the way, I'm not straight, <laughs> I'm LGBT, but, um, I'm pretty sure you already figured that out. <laughs> uh, no siwa, my woman, is if you had one. But if you were to say my women, which now that I'm thinking it was a little bit weird. <laughs> oh, but I also have my men, so I guess it's it's too in parallel. <laughs> Anyways, my women, it would be na no siwa me, and it would be no siwa one. So you need to add the one once you pluralize and possess something. So if there's more than one that you own, you're not you're saying ni, no si wa one. So that's why you have to uh, cross up the me. Do some varieties do add the me instead of some do, but most of them don't. Okay. And then here I got really crazy with you and some crazy cra <laughs> some crazy um sentences. Like for example, here I, I like to make them harder as I go down. So um here in like number nine and number 10, my emphasis was more on having you figure out who is being, what is possessing what. So if you wanna say inin ikal no chichi, you have to think, okay, this, and then ikal, this e is referring to the chichi. So it's saying that the kali, the house, it belongs to the dog. So, and, and the dog belongs to me. So when you translate this, you're gonna say, this is my dog's house. This is my dog's house, and then I made you. I made you. I made you one step further, and say, "Oh, negate this," and then translate it. So these are not my dogs. This inin ash ikal no chichi. This is not my dog. This is not my dog. Inin ash ikal no chichi. Oh, sorry. This is not my dog's house. So this ash could have been amo inin amo ikal no chichi amo inin ashkana ikal no chichi etc cetera, etc cetera. um and then what was I gonna say so 
the main this one was hard because you have to first think who does the dog be who does the house belong to and who does the dog belong to that's how you translate these things you have to look at this e and then whatever follows it i do want to say another thing is now what isn't like even though i gave you this structure now what could have you could have written this and now what as inin no chichi ikal inin no chichi ikal you could also say it that way in now what now what is flexible? So you that it would still translate. This is my dog's house, and you'll see when you read now what that they'll they'll put it in front or behind. So they could say, um, Diego's mom, uh, Diego. You say like you would think it would be Inan Diego, Diego's mom, but you could also say Diego Inan. Oh sorry, Inansin. Yeah, Diego Inansin, Diego's mother, or Inansin Diego, Diego's mother. So you can flip them around. Um, I don't know if in like a sequence of three, you should flip them around and mix them match because then it gets confusing. But in when there's just like two, you can say, Inin no chichi ikal, this is my dog's house. It would still make sense in that one. Okay, no chichi no cone. <laughs> so no chichi no cone, it looks like it's not a sentence, right? It's like my dog, my my child. But remember now what has the is always an implied. So no chichi no cone means my dog is my child, like a lot of people, you know, like to say. <laughs> but now we're gonna no negate it and say no chichi amo no cone. My dog is not my child. Um, and some people would debate that or whatever. <laughs> anyway, anyways, number six. Okay, here I uh, had you, I overuse the word wampo for a reason. It was just to like get you repetitive because the focus isn't really on the word wampo, which is friend. But um, the, the, the focus here was on getting you to say, you are my friend, he is my friend, and noticing that these prefixes, um, they can be strung together. So, ni y wampo, I am his or her friend. Ni y wampo. Ti y wampo, uh, you are his or her friend. I want to say that those eyes together, they are elongated. So you would say ti y wampo. Ti y wampo makes it clear that you're saying it as a whole sentence because if you say ti y wampo without elongating the eye, you're saying you are a friend. Ti y wampo, you are a friend, which is kind of weird because um, I'm pretty sure you have to emphasize or say whose friend it is or whatever. But because there's now what? Because now what, when you have like relatives or, or certain people, they have to be possessed. So you probably say tite wampo. Not 100% sure about that. Um, but essentially in now what, you have to, um, I just wanted you to recognize that you could string those two things together. Hold on, let me pause for now. All right, I'm back. It's just that I um, had to go to the restroom and take care of some business. <laughs> and the, anyways, uh, let, let's go back to the class. Uh, I hope that wasn't DMI. Okay, so uh, let's get back to the, the homework questions. So let's say, let's do, some, let's do one of the harder ones. Let's say, let's start with number 18. Ashkana into Wampoyoan. Uh, okay, so Ashkana into Wampoyoan. So in Nahuatl, what you should get really good at is breaking words into their parts because Nahuatl is an agglutinating language. Is there's going to be a lot of prefixes and suffixes and, pre and um, et cetera. So, so Ashkana, we know is one word, but when you see this long, really long word, inti wampoyoan, into wampoyoan, you have to break them up to what you know. So in, we know it belongs to y'all. This in prefix is y'all are something. Y'all are, or y'all are doing something if, it, if, it, if it's this is in front of a verb. So if I see in, I'm thinking y'all, right? Ustedes, or vosotros. Um, and to, it, we know is our. So I would hear, I think, y'all are our, y'all are our. Wampo, yo, wampo is friend, and yoan is friends possessed. Okay, so. Ashkana into Wampoyoan is y'all are not our friends. Um, so Wampo is one of those weird words where for some reason in the variety that we speak, they add the yo to it. So they, and they don't say no Wampo, no Wampo one, which I think they should say. They say no Wampoyoan. And that's why it's in there. But um, another one is Masewali. They don't say no Masewal one. They would say no, no Masewalpoyoan, my people. Um, 
so that's one of the weird exceptions that I wanted to point out right there. But um, I personally don't agree with it because I don't like inconsistencies. But that is a reality. So something that you should be aware of, at least of the variety that we're learning. Um, uh, da, 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 da. OK, uh, let's do one of the, let's see, later ones. The, the harder things about like 24, 24 and 25 is, is just recognizing who, what belongs to what, who belongs to who, or because that's really, that's really the hard thing in these uh, exercises. So, Kena y Tata Juan, Janet, no Tata Juan. Yes, um, Janet's parents are my parents. And also noticing there's no is, right? So, y Tata Juan, Janet, no Tata Juan. Um, ta tata Juan is parents, and, um, or Tata, Tata, Tatsin is, is dad, right? But Tatawan is pluralized, possessed, and so it's like in Spanish, padres. So y Tatawan is uh, sus padres, like in Spanish, but in English it would be like their parents. So the parents belong to Janet, and th those parents also belong to me. <laughs> so Janet's parents are my parents. Y Tatawan Janet, no Tatawan. Kanin, Kanin y Tatawan Monansin. Uh, where are um, where are your parents? Where are your mother's parents? Where are your mother's parents? So again, the parents belong to Monansin. They belong to your mom. So they're talking about your mother's parents. So really, this is understanding the order. You could also say Kanin Monansin y Tatahuan. Actually, that would still be okay. Uh, and you could also say Kena no Tatahuan, Janet y Tatahuan. And that would still be understood because we know who belongs to who. So we say, yes, my parents are Janet's parents. It would just be kind of switched. But pretty much the overall meaning is the same. Uh, ah, we are not y'all's children. This is just recognizing that you can string all of those together, even though Ashkana and Amo, you could put as a separate word here. And we are not y'all's, ooh, there's an S missing. We are not y'all's children. Ash ti in mokone one. So the Ashkana is the thing that goes in the front. Ti is we are, in y'all, but in mo means it belongs to y'all. And the, the con, conet is child. And it bec once it's possessed, it becomes konewan. So ash ti in mo konewan. Y'all are not, um, we are not y'all's children. And see this whole word, it looks like a word. It's not a word in Nahuatl, it's a whole sentence. So. You see, now it has like breaks a lot of rules that I guess English wouldn't break. But in now what this whole sentence is a whole, this word is a whole sentence. Uh, their friends are my friends. In in wampoyoan, no wampoyoan. Um, a lot of these are like, it's just understanding whose friends belongs to who. So their friends, so there's friends, right? And they belong to them. So it's gotta be inin, inin, it belongs to them. And then they are not, they are my friends. Recognizing that R, that you're not gonna use a verb, you're just gonna skip the R, and my friends. So you're gonna say their friends, my friends. Basically inin, one poyo one, no one poyo one. That's the whole sentence. Um, <laughs> I got crazy on this one. You are my friend and, and you are my friend and you are my parents' friend. <laughs> I'm crazy. I got crazy on this one. You are my friend, Tino Wampo. So this T is saying you. So we could have said Ta Tino Wampo if we wanted to, but we don't need it. And then this T is saying you are. And then No is I. It belongs to me. The No is it belongs to me. And Wampo, Tino Wampo, you are my friend. One and T in in Wampo, we. So I'm uh, my friends, and you are my parents' friend. Ooh. So here, when I said it, and you are my parents' friend, I'm, the person who is something is you. So you got to put the T there. And then who, who, who does the friend belong to? The friend belongs to my parents. So that's why I'm putting friend here, and it belongs to them, 
this inin is talking about them. And who is the them that the friend belongs to? It belongs to my parents. So this, this is kind of, I guess, I could see how this is confusing. But you have to think in parts like, who is the friend? You are the friend. So that's why I'm putting the T in front of the wampo. And wh who are you the friend of? You're the friend of my parents. So they are the ones that possess you. <laughs> you belong to them <laughs> in a way. And then so you are their friend and the friend that you are of my parents. And so here the parents, who do they belong to? They belong to me. So I'm saying no, that that one. And yeah, I hope that these exercises helped you because I did try to get a little bit crazy with them on you, but it, I, what I wanted you, you to do with this class was learn who belongs to who. And if you can get that straight, then you will be able to create these sentences really easily, hopefully, eventually. All right, uh, class number seven. Ooh, I don't need to last long. I almost feel like this class is almost like two hours. Okay, uh, let's... Let's leave it at a uh, session number seven because I don't want this class to get too long. Um, we'll stop at quest at um, yeah, we won't. We'll next time that we do these question sessions, we'll do um, number seven. Next time when we do this live, I'll have you all ask the questions because today I'm just doing this this way because you know it's going to be New Year's Day on the first, which is Friday, and so I know people aren't going to show up so. Here I am filming it for you. <laughs> All right, let's stop here. Tasokamati miak nochime atlen nech tepotstoka. Thank you all who follow me. Tlawel ni kamati ni mech machtia and ni mech machtis. I really like teaching you all. Um, ni uh, ni nekiskia imo juantin ashimo machtikan. Um, I want you all to learn everything that I uh, teach you. And Setonati y Mojuanti inwelise sanilose senja kenanichiwa. One day y'all will be able to speak the same like I speak. And they're kind of like, you know, I still got a thing. I'm still learning. And um, one thing I want to say is do not, like, you do not be one of those people that are, like, super conscious about making errors. Make errors in my class. Make errors when you speak to native speakers. That's the way that you're going to learn how to get better as a speaker because you're going to make errors and they're going to correct you. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, I have that up. <laughs> and that's cool. <laughs> um, so don't be scared to say things wrong or mess up because honestly, as long as somebody understands you, you should be fine. And eventually, once you do it a lot, you'll get better at it. So do not stress about that. Thank you all so much. We'll see each other in a week. Bye. Be happy.